Recording, check, check, check. Checking, one, two. This Fiat is so dirty, Ivan, it's time to bust out the all clean. Actually, no Nick, I'm Ivan, he's Nick. This is DIY Detail, and we're gonna wash this with a rinseless. I think the impulse for everybody out there is, let me get the all-purpose cleaner, let me pre-treat these panels, but yeah, I'm just kinda joking around here. We mentioned yeah. this can be done with a rinseless wash. Right, and this car, if you remember it, it's gonna be a card up here. Uh, we did a ceramic coating on this vehicle, but not everywhere. And it's sort of easy to tell where there is ceramic coating when where there isn't, there isn't any on this door. So look at the door compared to the rest of the car. Much dirtier. And since the last time we saw the Fiat, it's followed the bus for around 20,000 miles. It's been to Florida, it's been to the East Coast, it's been up and down, it's been to Quebec, it's been in the snow, it's been in the slush. It's done a lot of uh, following of the bus and it's been through 42 brush car washes and three touchless car washes. I haven't had the grand idea. He's like, we're gonna coat every other panel and we're gonna watch this over time. Right. You know, after a week, it was like, is this getting what we want? Because you know, it was a freshly washed car. It yeah. seemed like all the panels were doing pretty well. Exactly. But time has, has told the story, hasn't it? Oh, definitely. There, uh, I have a few photos and Nick can maybe insert one here somewhere. But anyways, we have photos of the car half and half and it's incredible. Uh, even the snow, the way it behaves on the vehicle is different. So we'll see this wash. The way we're gonna proceed though is a little different. Our rinseless, we can foam it. So we're gonna foam the rinseless on. We're not gonna pressure wash. To begin with, we're gonna start with the foam. And the reason we want to start with the foam is very simple. With the amount of grit that's on this vehicle, if we hit it with a pressure washer, we're going to be scratching it. The foam, the rinseless is gonna emulsify it, pull it off the paint, then we pressure wash it, and then we'll do the contact wash. Yeah, I mean, you could just pre-spray this with rinseless wash, 256 to one, which means exactly. one ounce of rinseless wash to two gallons of water. You could literally get your bucket set up and then dump some kind of bottle or sprayer in there and pre-spray. Right. So folks are gonna wonder, what dilution do I use to foam rinseless wash? To foam the rinseless wash, we already have it set up with, let me read this, uh, <laughs> 750 milliliters of water, roughly around 25 ounces, 24 ounces. We're just gonna add one ounce of rinseless. That's it? Yeah, we don't need a lot. See, I like to do two or three ounces. I like to get that crazy foam. Right. When we have an instance like this, the crazy foam actually isn't helping us. We want to have sort of a runnier foam to help pull this down. No kidding. Yeah. Okay. So You learn something new every day. More is not always better, folks. Ivan is the efficiency guru. He wants to save you time and money. I tend to do the glug glug method, yeah. which is fun, but there's a, there's a more efficient way. Right, and while you're there, if you can put that into the wash bucket. Absolutely. So in the wash bucket, we've got the legacy sponge. Again, we hear this online a lot. I would never use a sponge on a car. Yes, the sponge is actually designed specifically for the rinseless wash. How many ounces uh, are we putting in here, Ivan? Two ounces. We have okay. four gallons of water. I didn't know how many gallons you'd put in here. Sometimes you forget, is it a four gallon bucket, a five gallon bucket? Four capfuls, yeah, every capful is a half an ounce. Exactly. Okay, cool. Makes life a lot easier. And if you're on the metric system, very easy, 16 liters of water, one capful for every four liters. It's a lot of numbers. Yeah. All right. But we have people watching us from all over the world. Yeah, we have availability now in many countries, territories, and it's gonna keep growing, so it's very right. exciting. <clears throat> and if DIY isn't available where you are, call up your favorite distributor and ask them for DIY detail. The more people that ask, the more chances are they'll bring it in. So we have the rinseless in the foam cannon. We're just gonna set up the foam cannon just to make sure it's set up the way we want to. And when we do that, you don't wanna start by aiming it at the car. You wanna start by aiming it away from the car just to make sure this quick connect is doing its thing. How do we know that, Ivan? The way we know that. What I mean is how do you know you shouldn't do the thing? Because I've seen tips going flying. Have you ever been the one who's? Yes. Yes, I have too, and it's but not fun. I've never aimed one at a car and had it fly at a car because I know that these quick connects are very reliable, but the human putting it in isn't always reliable. So here we go.
the foam and the rinseless move its way down, but we can already see that the grit's basically gone from the surface. I'm so fascinated by this. So foam that clings longer, to me, I feel like it cleans better. But you mentioned runny foam is more helpful for, for kind of a trash car. Can you explain that again? Yeah. If we have grease on a vehicle, we have oil, we want that thick, clingy foam. We want that to emulsify, to be able to work longer. If we have grit on the vehicle, like we had on this one, we want the foam to run off. And when it runs off, it brings that dirt down with it. Now that the foam has settled down and the rinseless is actually starting to dry on the surface, take our pressure washer, pressure wash it off. And of course, new tip, Now one thing we're going to do differently, we're going to time lapse this, we're actually going to air dry the vehicle. And the reason we're going to air dry it is just to see how much grit and dirt the rinseless actually took off the vehicle. There might be someone out there who's like, what the heck is rinseless? Right. What are you doing? You got a pressure washer? What do you mean no rinsing? Right. Rinseless means we don't rinse it afterwards. The polymers and the surfactants that are left on the vehicle act as lubrication for the drying process. Yeah, this is a big deal. You're going to realize it. You think to yourself, well, I do the soap wash, right? And then I have to rinse it off at the end, and then I apply my last step protection or dry the car. This, we're done with the pressure washer. We've pre-treated. We have definitely pressure washer. We're just gonna wash it and then apply our last step protection. Right, exactly. So, let's get out our leaf blowers and a master blaster, and let's dry this off. So Nick, we quickly air dried it using our, our tools and it's still looking really dirty because it is. Now the rinseless pre-soak, what it did is it took that heavy grit off. Now we're left with basically a film on the vehicle and we're gonna pre-soak it again just because we don't wanna go dry with a sponge on a surface this dirty. So we'll just quickly pre-soak it and then we can start washing with the legacy sponge. I'm gonna do wheels. Very good, enjoy. I'm very good at it. You're a professional, Nick. Where all have you been in the uh, intervening couple of months here with the Fiat? We, uh, since leaving here, Georgia, Florida, uh, a lot of the East Coast, back up to, um, where did we go after that? Oh, we went to Las Vegas, we went to Utah. Yeah. Since then, uh, we were back here in uh, Nebraska, then uh, from there, back around uh, up to Quebec, and back here. So yeah, it's been a few miles here and there. What area of the country surprises you in terms of like an area that you love, that you didn't realize how awesome it would be? We don't travel to see places, we travel to see people. So do you think a boar's hair brush on lug nuts is over or underrated? It's whatever you want to do. It's whatever you want to do. So with the Legacy sponge, we don't want to use it soaking like this. We want to squeeze it out. And the two colors, basically it's to give you an idea where you've been. So if you always start with one side and finish with the other, you know that, oh, I just finished the black side, it's time to go back to the bucket. One thing Ivan taught me, and I've been detailing for years, he watched me clean wheels and just couldn't, couldn't stand it, his OCD. He's like, just work in a clock. Just go around once in a clock, because I'd be over here, and then over here, and over here. You teach detailers, Ivan. What, what other simple things like that do people not realize they should be doing? It's just getting a process down. And once you've got that process down, it's repeating it. So, Having a system in place, having standard operating procedures helps tremendously. You think you know it all and you realize every day as a detailer, you're just learning every day. We learn every day. It's an amazing thing. Detailing is so much fun because you're always learning. There's always new techniques. There's always new people coming on board and those new people are bringing 
new ideas to us. And by the way, DIY Detail has a Facebook group with like 50,000 people in it. It's a safe space for anybody to ask questions and Ivan mostly, but me as well, I kind of defer to you because there's so much that you've learned over 40 years. People ask questions and we're both super willing to answer. Exactly. Safe space for no such thing as a dumb question. No, definitely. Sometimes some dumb answers, but <laughs> no dumb questions. I just don't like it when people make fun of others and say, how did you not realize this? And how did you not know somewhere. this? Exactly. Now, one thing I'd like to show, let me get closer to the camera here. Look how dirty the sponge is. We have dirt on the sponge. Drop it in the bucket. Lift it out of the bucket. I didn't go to the grit guard. It's perfectly clean. One technique I heard recently from Graham, one of our really excited users is, to even be more efficient, he'll have two um, sponges in the bucket. Yep. He'll just drop one. He won't even run it on the grit guard. Yeah. And he'll grab the other one. So he'll just drop it, let the dirt fall out in the suspension, boom, 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 drop it. And I thought that was really an interesting technique. Exactly. Man, I moved through those wheels pretty quick. You did. Now I just get to watch you clean, which I always enjoy. <laughs> See the color coming back to the vehicle instead of an ugly gray. Now, we're not gonna use a drying aid on this at all, mm -hmm. simply because we're continuing our durability test on the coating. Yeah, we cannot compromise this experiment by adding ceramic gloss to any panels, right? We just wanna right, let them exist as is. And again, very dirty sponge, wow. Drop, lift, clean sponge. I don't understand it, Ivan. It's science or something. It is. Thank you, sir. Surprised you didn't go for our big XL towel. Oh, oh you've got one, got one in one your right hands. Exactly. Take this, take this away from me. Yeah. I actually love these towels. I might like them more than the drying blanket now. I haven't decided. They're just so small and they dry so much. The small, the ones I've got, yeah. They're such a, a great little tool to have. How is it even possible? And it allows you to have one in each hand, that way you're never putting your greasy little fingers on the car. Have we achieved the pinnacle of microfiber technology or do advances keep happening? Advances keep happening. Like what is going on, how do advances happen in towels? Because until I'd used this towel, I had no idea that a a twist loop towel, you know, that folds into the size of basically your hand could dry mostly an entire car. Right, and if you look at the towel you've got in your hand, that's a twist loop as well, but it's a very tight weave of a twist loop. Oh, don't touch that side. Oh, <laughs> didn't do that one. We only did this side. Right, okay. There'll be another video using soap on the other side uh, for those that prefer a soap wash. So there we go. Now, the car is still looking shiny, still looking good, despite having been through 40 some car washes. So Ivan, this is so grabby, and right. then this is really buttery smooth, and we didn't add any protection to it, except for the coating, right? That's how right. we ceramic coat our car in the first place. Exactly, and the rinseless wash leaves nothing behind. A lot of people are concerned about that, that the rinseless wash is gonna change the coating, you know, or whatever LSP you have on the vehicle. Last step protection. Exactly, thank you. Uh, whatever last step protection you have on the vehicle, that the rinseless wash is somehow going to alter it. The DIY rinseless wash leaves nothing behind. Okay, we have a video about foaming a rinseless wash, which you just saw in action. It's a little more detailed about how the process works. You can check that out right here.